You think you're eating enough protein, but what if I told you nearly half of adults are still starving for the amino acids their muscles desperately need, even while hitting their daily targets? The truth about protein quality changes everything you've been told about nutrition. Hi everyone, my name is Mark Bates. I'm a metabolic health coach, and this is part of my question and answer series. Protein myths exposed. Why? 48% of adults are starving for amino acids. Okay, let's get to the question. It's a two-parter. When you first read through this protein quality research paper, Understanding Dietary Protein Quality, what specific finding made you stop and think, this changes everything about how we should view protein? And then, you mentioned that 48% of older adults fall short on essential amino acids despite meeting the RDA. That's a massive gap. When you see numbers like this, what do you think is driving the resistance in mainstream nutrition to acknowledge that our current protein recommendations might be fundament fundamentally flawed? Well, yeah. So the most paradigm-shifting insight from understanding dietary protein quality, digestible indispensable amino acid score and beyond, is that meeting the RDA for protein does not guarantee meeting the body's needs for essential amino acids. Right? Once you account for digestibility and metabolic utilization, so it's not how much you eat, it's how good it is, how good the stuff is that you're eating. From a scientific and policy standpoint, the resistance to revisiting protein recommendations, even in light of data like 48% of older adults falling short on essential amino acids, despite meeting the RDA, is driven by a convergence of historical, political, and institutional factors. Here's what stands out. Okay, so let's get into this. The research shows that while 97% of U.S. adults appear to meet the RDA, when you adjust for utilizable protein intake using DIAS, which is the Digestible Indispensable Amino Acid Score, the prevalence of people falling short on at least one essential amino acid jumps dramatically, up to 48% in older adults, those over 71 years old. Plant-derived proteins are disproportionately affected because they often lack one or more indispensable amino acids, like lysine or methionine or leucine, and have lower true ideal digestibility, meaning less of what you actually eat makes it into circulation to support muscle protein synthesis okay and even scoring higher pro even scoring higher proteins by traditional metrics which is the pdca aas score can deliver much less usable essential amino acids than expected due to anti-nutrients processing storage damage for example lysine uh, lysine glycation or a food matrix that locks amino acids away from digestion. Okay? So you're not getting everything you're, you think you are getting. So this finding overturns the long-held assumption that protein grams are protein grams. It suggests that dietary recommendations based only on total grams of protein are misleading, especially for people relying on plant-heavy diets or those with higher needs older adults, people with sarcopenia, or recovering from illness. The implication is clear. Animal source proteins, meats, eggs, dairy, and fish, consistently diver, deliver higher diast values, better amino acid balance, and higher bioavailability, making them more reliable for meeting metabolic needs on, gram for gram, on a gram-for-gram gram basis. Plant proteins often require either higher total intake or precise complementary combinations to approach the same quality, a challenge rarely met in practice. In short, this research reframes protein adequacy from unquantity eaten to quantity of digestible, bioavailable, indispensable amino acids absorbed and utilized, fundamentally changing how we should assess and recommend protein in human diets. For a carnivore or ketogenic approach, it validates prioritizing nutrient-dense animal proteins to guarantee optimal amino acid availability without overconsumption of energy. All right. 
There is a legacy of nitrogen balance studies that have flawed foundations. So the current RDA, 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight a day, is rooted in decades old nitrogen balance studies that only measured whether nitrogen intake equals nitrogen output, not whether protein supported optimal function, muscle mass, or healthy aging. And these studies were conducted largely in young, healthy men, not women, older adults, or metabolically compromised population. Now, no one wants to admit that the foundations of the RDA is physiologically incomplete because it would undermine decades of dietary policy, food labeling laws, and public health messaging. Yeah, there's a lot invested in the old standards. There's an over-reliance on PDCAAS and gram equivalence thinking. So PDCAAS, or Protein Digestible Corrected Amino Acid Score, long used for labeling, treats proteins as interchangeable grams. This approach overestimates plant protein quality and underestimates the importance of true digestibility and amino acid balance. Admitting that 10 grams of plant protein does not equal 10 grams of animal protein would disrupt plant-based dietary guidelines. Yeah, who pays for that? Food industry marketing and school meal programs. The FAO recommended replacing PDASS with DIAS, D-I-A-A-S, in 2013, yet adoption has been minimal because it would expose the shortcomings of many stable plant proteins. Okay? There's political and ideological pressures as well. Current nutrition science is heavily influenced by the environmental and plant-based diet agendas, which push for lower animal protein consumption despite its higher quality and bioavailability. And public policy that are tied to calorie restriction and low-fat dogma, where protein recommendations are capped to avoid dangerous high-protein intakes. So acknowledging that many people, especially older adults, are under-consuming high-quality protein would conflict with plant-forward initiatives like Eat Lancet, which recommends cutting animal protein drastically. Eat Lancet is a European, primarily a European um, eating program. Okay. So you also have industry and economic interests. Grain and legume producers have vested interest in keeping plant proteins classified as good enough. Many processed food companies rely on cheap, low-quality plant proteins, for example, soy isolates and wheat gluten, to market high-protein foods. So high-protein foods are not very good for you, okay? Requiring amino acid quality scoring on labels, the DIAS, would expose this disparity, likely reshaping consumer demand toward animal source proteins and disrupting billion dollar product lines. Right? Follow the money as always. The minimum versus optimal debate is a big one here as well. RDAs were never designed as an optimal health target. It was the minimum to avoid, frankly, deficiencies. And, and that's a problem, right? You, you should not be eating to just avoid deficiencies. You should be eating to optimize your health. New evidence, like the DIAS and staple isotope tracer studies, show older adults often need 1.2 to 1.6 grams of, per kilogram a day of high-quality protein for muscle retention, bone density, and metabolic resilience. Moving from a deficiency prevention model to an optimization model would force a complete rethink of the low-protein, high-carb dietary foundation promoted for decades. Okay, so the bottom line here is acknowledging the 48% gap would mean admitting the RDA is not enough for many, if not most, especially when diets rely on plant proteins, requiring more animal source protein, which is politically unpopular, and overhauling decades of dietary guidelines, school lunch standards, and global policy frameworks built on the protein adequacy myth. It's far easier for institutions to ignore inconvenient truths than the risk upheaval of nutrition orthodoxy, industry partnerships, and ideological narratives. Once again, as always, follow the money. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the appropriate section here. And we are building a community here. I'm here to try and give you the answers you're looking for. 
So if you have something you want me to follow up on, or do some more work, put it in the comments as well. I'll try to put it in the schedule as soon as possible. And as always, if you haven't done so, please like, subscribe, and share this video with somebody else. Uh, it helps the channel a great deal, and you could be helping a lot of other people. Thank you very much.